And once again, here we are broadcasting in the Ginger and Baker studio in the heart of the Music District in downtown Fort Collins. Um, very excited today to announce for our KRFC Radio Vision Live at Lunch, White Rose Motor Oil. Take it away. I'm not your inspiration. I am the main attraction. No martyrs, no queens have ever shared my name. I'll torture your poor conscience I'm the reason you feel bad But when you do wrong You're the one to blame Baby, I come on I should be 
Was uh, blood left to bleed, and before that, ain't no saint. White Rose Motor Oil here in the Ginger and Baker Studio for our live at lunch. That's a powerful sound coming out of two people. <laughs> Thank you. It is awesome. I love it. Um, so we have Aaron De Summer and Keith De Summer rocking our faces here. Um, thanks so much for coming. Thanks for having us. Yeah, yeah. How about, uh, I was thinking about taking this time to get to know both of you a little bit more intimately since we're going to be hanging out for a little while. Yeah, that sounds good. All right. Um, Aaron, yeah. we'll start with you, All and right. we'll go clockwise around the whole yeah. group. Yeah, I mean, it's a big <laughs> band, so take uh, your time. <laughs> so, um, Aaron, what kind of, uh, how about, let's go with, I always ask a different question here. Um, uh, what drew you to music? What was the, was maybe a first band or uh, uh -huh. something that you remember in your childhood that was, that like, got you to love music a lot. Yeah, so I, I grew up in a pretty musical family, um, but and I started playing piano when I was like four. Okay. Um, but my sister was the singer and she got a lot of attention. She got a lot of uh, um, money spent on her and like mm -hmm. choir practice and all these things. And everybody was like, oh yeah, you're fine. You're fine. Just go ahead and just you know do your thing <laughs> over here. Um, and so I just always loved it, but I never really wrote songs or never really did anything um, other than just play piano. And then um, when I was 19, I moved to Alaska and had somebody show me some basic guitar chords. Mm -hmm. And that was pretty much the end of it. I, once I realized that I could play guitar badly, I was like, <laughs> this is it for me. That's all you have to uh, do. That's all I had to do, <laughs> yeah. It's carrying on that tradition to this day. Um, but uh, yeah, so uh, when I was, after we got married, uh, uh, I wrote my first song. And mm -hmm. then from that, it was kind of, we just kept going and kept, kept rocking. Kept rocking, yeah. That's Been awesome. Been in a couple projects together. and um, But we, we actually met at a, at a, church that is in Denver that we're, we're not we don't attend any longer but um we met on the worship team there oh nice <laughs> and uh yeah that was kind of kind of all she wrote yeah, yeah. well the I feel like that is a fairly common yeah uh story a for a lot of musicians okay. is people uh starting playing or singing in churches and yeah. stuff like that so yeah it's not too uncommon at no, all no, by I any means it's, really it's, it's awesome yeah but that also does remind me of the the dad joke when I when I was young all I really wanted to do was learn how to I, 
really, uh, what is it? All I wanted to do was learn how to play guitar really badly. And now, 30 years later, I can play guitar really badly. <laughs> really badly, yep. but, yeah. <laughs> it's true. It's I true. am no, living that I, life. <laughs> I, think, I think it sounds wonderful, and especially you. the Thank louder you. you turn it up. It right, sounds exactly. Amazing. That's how you do and, it. You yeah. just turn it up, add some distortion, and everybody, you're golden. Like, just to do that. Yeah. And so did you play any piano in with bands or anything? Or did you just, yeah. just okay. Yeah, so we were in a band called the Hollyfelds for a long time, for about eight years. And uh, six years? I can't math. Um, no. But um, we were in that band for a while, and I played piano in that when we first started, and okay. auto harp, because I nice. didn't really feel comfortable playing. And we had two other people who played guitar beautifully. Like, they were really talented. Yeah. So I was like, well, I'll just let them handle it. And then as time went on, we decided we didn't want to have to haul around a keyboard. And I think we had a point where we had... 12 instruments among the five of us. Oh, yeah. And so, yeah, we were a sound guy's ni nightmare. Yeah. So uh, this is clear <laughs> why we're a two-piece now, yeah, right? Exactly. <laughs> I only use this one for 30 seconds right. in one song. But it, right. I'm going to play without this ukulele it, yeah. for like it 30 makes, seconds. It makes the then. song. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, so we stopped doing that, and we switched to pretty much all guitars. And, uh, yeah. and then, yeah, we, that was the end of that. That's awesome. <laughs> and, Keith, what about you? Is there a moment in your childhood or... A song you heard on oh, the radio? Yeah. Uh, so He's got a storied past. Oh, yes. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, I just remember always, always enjoying music, even as a kid, and that was always encouraged in my house. Like, my parents, I remember really early, they bought me this Mickey Mouse turntable, mm -hmm. like, and I remember listening to, like, just Sesame Street records and stuff like that. And just I had me some Sesame stuff. Street records. Yeah, Spider-Man Spider records <laughs> and being, like, totally into that. And then, like, for, that was where it started. And then, like, for, for birthdays and Christmas and stuff, at, like, always I would just ask for more and better stereo equipment and more mm -hmm. and different recorded music. So um, started making tapes off of just the radio and stuff before I could buy my own records um, just because I didn't have money. Yeah. Um, First record I bought was Michael Jackson's Thriller. On the nice. same day, I bought Pac-Man Fever by Buckner and Garcia, <laughs> which I think that that dichotomy tells you something about <laughs> <laughs> buying novelty music as well as like the, the biggest pop album of that year. It's perfect. Um, so yeah, just a lot of stuff like that. Um, Doctor Demento early on. Yeah, yeah. Big, that was a big bonding. Yeah, we, oh, we, nice. we both, both we both grew up listening yeah. to Doctor Demento. That's yeah. awesome. Secretly um, at night. With the but I mean, as far as like as as far as like popular music, um, like when new wave started to come out mm -hmm. and like punk adjacent stuff, um, like the Go Go's, the Police. I heard the Clash and the Ramones. Yeah. Um, but like they're they're singles. Like so, I mean, a lot like. Not not necessarily punk rock, but like punk stuff that was adjacent to yeah, punk. yeah, and being really into that. The Go Go's were uh, definitely a big a big influence for sure. Okay, um, in terms of music, and then um, as far as like starting to play music, um, like I didn't I didn't start to play anything until I was probably like sixteen, and I had a friend who was just like, we should start a band. And I was like, yeah, okay. And he's like, you should play bass. I was like, yeah, okay. Okay, I can do um, that. So I, most, all, all the other bands that Aaron talked about, I played bass guitar in. Okay. This is the first the first band that I played drums in. I started playing drums for this project oh, nice. in uh, 2018. Wow. Um, but yeah, so we started a band, a heavy metal band back then called Eximator. Yeah. Um, we, I, How old were you then? I, did you say? Yeah, that be, that became Five Iron Frenzy. Okay, yeah, um, that's huge. And uh, after that, then we started the Hollyfells when Five Iron broke up, and the Jekylls we were in together, and now this band. Yeah. Okay. Um, you you asked a question. Sorry. Oh, I was just gonna say, how old were you when you first started that band? Did you say? Exumator. I was yeah. probably. I mean, I was probably seventeen. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Like, I mean, I think I think I was the oldest member, and I think I had just gotten out of high school, or maybe was like at the tail end of my senior year. Yeah. Um. So. And Five Iron Frenzy is still kicking. They are, yes. Yeah, yeah, I'm not a part and, of it. Um, yeah, not, you're not, but <laughs> yeah. they're, they're yeah, like so an 11 piece or something. There's a lot of people in that eight, band now. It's an eight piece band. It's um, a completely different thing from this. <laughs> we, uh, we were together until 2003, and okay. then we, we broke up, and then about 10 years later, they got back together. They asked me if I wanted to participate, and I said I did not. Yeah. So. Yeah. And we had talked about before we even started filming. Ba band dadding is a hard. Job yes. being <laughs> trying to be in charge of all the band members. I mean, is, to, to some degree, be I've been so. called the band dad for yeah. for most for all of those bands. I think I'm not sure. I'm not sure it's accurate, but yeah. <laughs> but I was the one who tried to organize people's schedules and things like that and yeah. communicate that with counts. people. Schedules, so. booking, yeah. booking. Yeah, I did a lot. Managing, of yeah, whatever that is, or whatever <laughs> gets thrown at you <laughs> at the wall. So that's awesome. But yeah, Five Iron Frenzy had 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 a, had a big time in the '90s. So. Yeah. That's great. And um, Aaron, you 
played with the symphony before. And yeah. yeah, can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, so that was back in 2013. It was part of a Westward showcase, and uh, it was really fun. Uh, we did the Beck Song Reader um, oh, yeah. thing project that he did. Yeah, um, I remember that. Yeah, oh, it was so great. Everybody we worked with at the symphony was awesome. Like, it was just such a blast. And it was us and um, Otis Taylor and Nathaniel Rateliff, That's who you awesome. may have oh, heard of. Yes, um, and Otis Taylor is phenomenal, yeah, Otis Taylor too. Is Holy moly. Amazing. And yeah, yeah. So Nathaniel Rateliff has gone on to do some bigger things yes <laughs> um, slightly, yeah, bigger, slightly than, bigger than what we're doing here but yeah today. it was it was pretty neat i mean the uh the whole experience was such a blast and uh yeah i would yeah anytime a symphony wants to come join us in anything <laughs> I mean, yeah around, so, i yeah. it always blows my mind they just to try and oh, do everything so cool. everything yeah. they're just it's so fun to yeah. watch the projects that they'll just throw themselves into oh yeah they and they and they're so creative my my day job boss is actually one of the singers in the chorale oh cool and so she gets music in a way that like I really I benefit from it and, yeah. and I really appreciate it. Yeah. <laughs> and we, we went and see her, saw her sing yeah. with the symphony doing oh, uh, Danny Elfman music Danny which oh, was really wow. cool. Yeah. It was great. It was so fun. That's crazy. Yeah, it was really cool. That is a lot of fun. Yeah. Well uh, it's very nice to meet you both and I yeah. hope hopes our <laughs> listeners and watchers um, if you are listening and you want to watch you can find it at uh, YouTube KRFC Radio Vision. Um, it's always fun to watch instead of just listen to. So you got a couple more songs for us. What's up next? We do. This next song is called Just Your Type. And it's really about that wrong type of girl. Ready? Yep. One, two, three, four. Well, I see you sitting all alone. Do I 
myself kiss you White Rose Motor Oil here on Live at Lunch, and that was Only in Dreams. Yes. And before that, Just Your Type. You got it. Awesome. Lovely. I had a question for you, Keith. Yes. Um, so you said that before this band you had never played drums in a band. Had you played, had you taken lessons or anything before that? or No. No? No. Uh, so in Q, when the, when the Jekylls broke up, <laughs> got to keep my bands right. <laughs> when the Jekylls broke up, um, we tried to do a two-piece, yeah. Um, just because it's a lot easier to organize things as a two-piece, especially as a married couple. Yeah, you know your schedule. <laughs> yeah, scheduling <laughs> things is easier. It, um, um, so I was trying to play. We were trying to do a bass and guitar kind of thing, mm-hmm. and I think that we both were just kind of like, we, this doesn't have the energy that we hoped it would have. Yeah, we needed we need drums, and we we thought about a couple different things. We thought about maybe me trying to play bass and play just drums with my feet, um, like. Or like I think for a little while we talked about maybe even a drum machine. We nixed that idea yeah. very quickly. So yeah, in, in 2018, I bought a really really cheap kit off of Amazon okay. and uh, started doing like online lessons, but not like okay. anything not anything in person. Too yeah. Okay. Yeah, because yeah. I mean with the like cowpunk uh, railroad beat, you're get, you're getting pretty fast. I mean you've been playing you know like for about a little years, while, yeah. but still like it's it's pretty intense uh, beat to to never have taken lesson or anything. That's right. why I'm like, holy moly. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's been very fun. It's been really cool. I mean, like, I was always I was always interested in drums, but I just yeah. never had the chance. And part of it was, uh, again, so going back to 
being, you know, 15 or 16 or whatever, still living at home. Yeah. Drums are loud. Yeah. Bass guitar you could turn down. So yeah, exactly. <laughs> so. Yeah, we bought my son a drum set at three years old and people thought we're crazy right yeah, yeah. <laughs> now just turned to, he's 11 today but he's uh he um, he's see, now, now he has a full-size nice. kit That's and everything awesome. still playing but everybody's like what's wrong with you i'm like <laughs> I, I had drums in, in my house growing up <laughs> right. so i'm good with it <laughs> <He'll> be fine <laughs> exactly and so all the songs you're playing today are from your brand new album the gift of poison yes which uh, I believe was referenced in Ain't No Saint, right? Yeah, yeah. All right, I thought I heard that come yeah, in there, yeah, so that's did. where that was drawn clever, from. You were dropping it right there in that first song. Yeah, <laughs> throwing it all out there. Um, so how did this record come to be? Uh, where was it recorded? Is there a, a bigger story behind it that you'd like to tell us? Yeah, so uh, we recorded it with um, yeah, kind of a bigger story. I'm, so the person who we worked with to record this, his name is Brian Hunter, and he um, was somebody I met when I worked at Swallow Hill back mm -hmm. in 2006. Um, he actually recorded our very first Holly Fells demo, which okay. we still have somewhere fucking around. <laughs> nice. Um, but um, he is an amazing human, and everyone should go and record with him if they can. <laughs> I, you know, I'm not supposed to say that. <laughs> anyway, if you happen to meet Brian, I would recommend his studio. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Reframe it. Um, yeah, he is he's, seriously, he's the best. Uh, but yeah, so we've known him for years. He did several Hollyfields full-length albums. He did an EP for us, um, and then I don't think he did anything for the Jekylls. We had a, we went to a different guy for a little bit, um, who was also great. But then we started doing stuff with Brian again, and he did our he did You Can't Kill Ghosts, which is our 2020 album, yep. um, and then he did. Um, he did this for us in studio, and then he mixed Country Pop, which you had talked about earlier, which yeah. um, was our covers album that we recorded during peak COVID in our kitchen. So, in our uh, <laughs> in the kitchen, nice. Yeah, um, gotta do yeah, it somewhere. He, he's just mm -hmm. the kind of person who you can send things to, and, and he just gets us. Like basically, we recorded everything. We maybe went back and forth like one or two times, okay. but he just gets it. Knew so it. knew what to do. Yeah, he's great. awesome. Yeah, but yeah, we've known him since 2006, and he's just been. Still working ben with him. He's, just a, he's a calm, wonderful presence in the studio. That's nice to <laughs> yeah. have. Yeah, he's That's awesome. That's nice to have. And how long did it take you? Did you do like one big session or did you yeah. break it down into um, a bunch I of small ones? I think it took us two, two full days. Okay. And then, um, and then mixing and stuff. But okay. he, again, he did most of that on his own. Yeah. And then would send us stuff and we'd be like, you Check know, it here's off. a little note here and there. But really it was like, I think most of the things were like one back and forth and yeah. it was over. And so the songs were ready to go pretty much yeah, once you got yeah. in. You didn't have to sit there and yeah, yeah. We, over I mean, we were around. pretty prepared when we went into the studio. We we try to not waste anybody's time or yeah, money. It's expensive. <laughs> it yeah, is. more <laughs> money especially. Yeah, yeah, we're not Fleetwood Mac. We can't be doing like you know years in the studio. Yeah. So we go in super prepared with everything as ready as possible, which is you know means that we have about two years between albums. But that's pretty fast yeah. for a lot of bands yeah. and. Um, so yeah, so yeah, I, we're working on new stuff now, and cool. uh, yeah, so hopefully and in twenty twenty five we'll have another originals album, and then this next year we're doing another little project that's some covers and oh cool fun. yeah those are fun and to have. we'll do that with Brian as Gotta well. Got to have those in your back pocket, yeah, especially yeah. for the those you, longer you, sets. Yeah, <laughs> the longer sets, and you're playing a bunch of festivals. So yeah, throwing out the covers in a festival are gonna grab people's ears real quick yeah um, that's i think one thing that we that we do in the studio especially more recently um and you were talking about um other instruments that we played we play like i play bass guitar in the studio aaron mm -hmm. plays piano and organ and um we add harmonies and things like that yeah she adds her own harmonies <laughs> um but so i mean i think stuff like that just uh is stuff that that we can't do live as a two-piece but that we do in the studio and uh it, it just definitely makes it a, a cooler cooler sounding experience I yeah think. For a long time, Doesn't we were help. under that um, idea that if we couldn't do it live, we didn't want to do it in the studio. But then we yeah. kind of started realizing it's like the studio and you know it, what is it? It's David Byrne? Yeah, there's a there's a, Ed's quote, a quote that he's like from, oh, performing and performing in the studio are two different things. And, yeah. And so we try to make our live experience feel as much like that studio experience, but it's just going to be different. And and yeah. you know, there's nobody singing harmonies and stuff, but it's still going to be its own kind of good. You know? Yeah, yeah, it makes yeah. sense both ways because yeah. you want it to be this brilliant masterpiece that you right. that you built <laughs> but you know and you can try to do it live but right. and yeah it's also like when once you're better known it's a little easier but when you're a new band and you're starting it's like if i if i put all this stuff on it is that what they're going to expect when right. i show up for the gig right right, right. and we were <laughs> so, trying to walk that line really carefully yeah. i think that we did a good job of it i feel like i don't think anyone is showing up 
if they're disappointing, it's for other reasons. Yeah. <laughs> well, <laughs> Not now, for that. now you know, and I think your YouTube page is populated fairly well in the video, yeah. so now people can check you out and know what to expect with right. a live show right. in advance. Where even ten years ago, that wasn't as much of the case. It wasn't so easy to get yeah. that content. But so, what's your songwriting process like? Do you sit down together and write in a uh, in a room or in your kitchen, or do you <laughs> or do you just like hang out and write songs by yourself and bring them to Keith or? Yeah, so it's kind of evolved over time. I think right now we're in the most collaborative state, which has been really awesome. I love that. Um, I, it it kind of starts with me writing lyrics, and mm -hmm. then, um, or at least that's how it used to start. Now it's kind of more like. I kind of just write down whatever story I want to tell, and then now we're taking that in and we're trying to write actual songs around it. Where before it was kind of like I was writing lyrics and then kind of back thinking about a song part yeah. of it. You know, it's like, and that that's fine and it still works, it works but I yeah. feel like we're really trying to construct song, not to sound too pretentious, but like we're really no. trying to make them songs, you know, and, yeah. and use the songs to the music part to tell the story too. Okay. Um, so yeah, I mean, I'd say right now that's been my favorite part about this project is how much we've both grown as musicians, um, writing songs together yeah. and like figuring out stuff and being open to each other's ideas, you know, and after almost 20 years of being married, it's, uh, it's really good to have that communication back yeah. and forth about something artistic. It's really neat. Yeah. So. And so do you, do you, uh, draw, or should I say, do you write stuff about um, more personal, your life, or is there times when you're just like, I'm just writing, honey, I'm just writing this <laughs> <laughs> as somebody else, I'm not writing this at you. Yeah, I, I do write a lot of songs about murder, so you know, yeah, I mean, I'm just saying. Um, but it, no, fits in yeah. the, it fits in the vibe, though. <laughs> yeah, um, so I think right now, um, a lot of songs, like the next two songs we're going to play, one is about depression, and I'd say it's pretty personal. Um, and then the next one is about two separate women named Shirley that I've okay. met over time. And, uh, and I just kind of combined their two stories into one complicated story okay. um, for That's the song fun. Red Light. Yeah, one's my grandmother, and then the other is a lady who we, we met out in our travels okay. and who was who kind of came up and told me this very fantastic story. She, she just walked up to me, and she was very soft-spoken, and so I could barely hear her, and she was just like, do you see that house over there with the red light? I don't know what's going on in that house. I don't know what's <laughs> happening. And I was like, well, I'm going home and writing a song about this. I uh, guess this is just, it was, she was so like very intense about it. That's but, like, funny just this quiet older lady and so yeah I was like well surely I gotta immortalize this yeah. moment in time because she told me a lot of other things about her life and yeah I just learned a lot about Shirley that day and well so, that's awesome yeah, yeah it's so, fun to yeah. smash <laughs> smash different things up right, right. that and you hear and see my grandma and... that are in there that are the part about the gun is my grandma yeah <laughs> <laughs> well, let me grab this I want to show off the white rose motor oil the gift of poison this is the new album the vinyl it's available at all the shows and that's where all the songs are coming from today. And the wonderful little tote as well. <laughs> that's pretty cool. And I, I thought I'd just show all this stuff off because the art's really cool. Some stickers. All available at White Rose Motor Oil shows. Um, and we'll talk about some shows coming up here. And uh, yeah, why don't you play, what, what, what do we got next? So the next song is called uh, Meet Me at the Bottom. And uh, yeah, it's a real fun song about depression. <clears throat> Meet me at the bottom Meet me in the rain We can all dance As we circle the drain Comes on like a freight train Full of mud and pain But what I like about you Is I don't need to explain That you need to meet me at the bottom Once again One, two, three, four Guys been pointing at me like the longest gun for most
KRFC, yeah. live at lunch here on KRFC Radio Vision with White Rose Motor Oil. And this is uh, right, Red Light, the yeah, this song about the, the Shirley's. The Shirley's, yeah, the song's right. about the Shirley's. Right. It'll become clear in a moment. <laughs> <laughs> Know what's going on in oh, that house with all those hoes? She said they turn that red light on almost every single night. And you can see it for miles and miles, and it makes so bright. Hey girl, what do you think is going on? Hey girl, what do you think is going on? You see that red light? Just to hear her voice each night in Fort Morgan. Surely used to dance a bit, but she doesn't do that anymore. She leaves that for the other girls who have men knocking down the door. Rose Motor Oil here um, on KRFC's Radio Vision live at lunch and uh, the song about the Shirley's <laughs> and then yep. before that was Meet Me at the Bottom and uh, Aaron we frequently have a lot of gear music gear nerds listening <laughs> and watching <laughs> here on KRFC oh, no. <laughs> I was gear. wondering what's your uh, tremolo that you use oh gosh it's a TC electronic um, I don't know if it's pronounced Oh, so T.C. Helicon? T.C. Electronics. Okay. And then uh, it's a Choka or Chaka? I don't know. Chaka. Chaka. 
That's a, yeah. It's a good one. Yeah. I like, yeah, I like it. I like those noises. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it makes good noises. <laughs> yeah. And so are you and are you running through uh, two amplifiers back there? Yeah. One... So I have this thing called a, a Mimic pedal. And okay. It runs through um, a Mark bass and a Blues Junior. Okay. And uh, yeah, I started doing that to kind of, this is his old bass amp. Yeah. And so since he doesn't bass. play bass anymore. Yeah. Like um, so yeah, now we've got it boosted up a little bit yeah, loud. It's a, yeah. yeah. It's good to. <laughs> be able to figure out how to fill in that, yeah, that yeah. base. Yeah, because, I mean, so. it's hard when you're just two people and, like, sometimes you really want to make a lot of noise. Yeah, so. you need the big sound yeah, to, yeah. yeah, and the bass, uh, like, like when your friend said, you should play bass, <laughs> people don't always realize how important, so important. the bass is oh, yeah. in, in a band <laughs> and what the bass player is doing is frequently uh, not quite heard on the same level as what a lead okay. guitar player is doing, but, yeah, yeah. it's a whole different vibe that you ride when you play the bass yeah being so. in this band i mean i already appreciated bass players because obviously i married one yeah. <laughs> but um but i think even now like i appreciate them more than ever <laughs> the yeah. bass players now, are now you're the live bass player <laughs> i guess i am <laughs> sorry bass players <laughs> gotta get the bass fills on those low strings yeah well, that's awesome i did want to talk about country pop a little yeah. bit too because uh yeah. how did you decide what song did you start with like a list of 500 songs or something <laughs> <laughs> and then try to narrow it down to what is it there's a lot of songs on it like i think there's 20? there's 14, 14? songs okay. on there and then there's it's interjected with um these little clips from 50s horror movies um, yeah. that he found and I, I actually I was like indestructible moon monster I've never I don't know that song maybe I do and then I googled it and the first thing that came up was like Israel crash lands oh, no. tardigrades into the moon yeah. like, and I was like oh yeah. this is not something I thought I'd be no. reading today I, yeah I just found old science fiction and horror movie public domain kind of stuff and that was fun we put them in there yeah yeah, yeah but the song list we picked um, I think they just kind of evolved over time like some of the songs we did with other bands like we did um Angel of the Morning and Jolene. Um, mm -hmm. We did Jolene with the Holly Fells and then Angel of the okay. Morning we did with the Jekylls and then I'm trying to remember what else is on there. Rose Garden Rose we picked Garden, because we're say. very uh, literal people and it has the word rose in it. Yeah. You'll see that in the next project that we do. There's another song with the word rose in it because we're plain and simple. And <laughs> um, But yeah, like Boots, um, mm -hmm. These Boots Are Made For Walking, we yep. did that because we just really wanted to do that song. And yeah. I mean, it's a fun song and, you, and there's punk versions of it out there. Yeah, yeah, oh yeah. But, yeah, so that's kind of, I Some mean, that's the depth of our, our covers picking. Is it is it too hard? No? Okay, great. <laughs> <laughs> Does it fit with the vibe? Can you make it fit with the vibe? Can we make it fit with the vibe? Yeah, because some of them I think were... Uh, um, we did the, the Statler Brothers song um, as part of a Holly Fields. We did a Tarantino Halloween thing where okay, we played cool. all songs from Tarantino movies. Yeah. Like that was in like 2011 or something or even earlier maybe. Cool. Um, and that was really fun and yeah. So a lot of those songs is kind of carried over from that. Yeah. And, uh, are yeah. a lot of them still sitting in your sets or yeah. just a handful of them? Yeah, um, I mean, I'd say uh, you can probably count on hearing, if you come to a longer set, Jolene, Rose Garden, Boots, yeah. uh, Angel of the Morning sometimes makes it in there. Um, but yeah, now we've got a new batch, and so nice, we're yeah. just... Uh, <laughs> That's yeah. exciting. But we were really going for that 60s and 70s yeah. classic country, and this next group will be a little more broad your own little jukebox yeah. project yeah it's pretty sweet <laughs> well it's fun and it's fun to be able to do stuff like i, like I said we did that one in our kitchen yeah. and uh and then because brian is a miracle worker he managed to make it salvageable so and, <laughs> and presentable it sounds like yeah <laughs> so in addition to it being the only i think the only one that we didn't record in brian's studio we did record it no we we didn't record lucretia either we did oh you're right so we recorded some things at home especially because of um covid where mm -hmm. we just didn't feel safe going into a studio but brian mixed it but the country pop album was actually mastered oh, by, yes. <laughs> by a very mysterious person called Longmont Potion Castle. Okay. And if you're not familiar with Longmont Potion Castle, he Don't is... Don't ruin the mystery. No, I, well, I, <laughs> I'm just saying he, he is an artist who is best known for doing prank phone calls. Oh, interesting. Uh, he started in the Denver area about like 30 years ago or something like that. Huh. Maybe, and uh, he's put out a number of albums, like 16 albums. Yeah. He still is completely anonymous to us. He has an email address, so we emailed him. He, he has a studio where yeah. he makes stuff. Um, so we emailed him and asked if he would master our album. He said he would, so we just emailed him the files. He emailed us back files. Yeah. We still, have you, we still haven't met him. Yeah. He's, he's a mysterious he's prank a mysterious phone being. call. Yeah. Yeah. He refers to what he does as phone work. Phone work. Because not, not, yeah. it is a different, it's different than most prank phone calls. Okay. Yeah, I was going to say, is that industry doctor... still available to work in? I didn't <laughs> right. know if that still works. So there are it's interviews work. with him, and he's talked about how it has gotten harder because yeah. of yeah, caller ID like and things like that. I mean, the jerky boys were huge. Yeah, this is more like avant-garde 
prank calling, if that could be a thing. Like, it's, like, yeah. artistic in a way. Okay. I don't know how to explain Interesting. it. Interesting. Avant-garde prank calling. It's not jerky prank boys. Call. It's not jerky boys. <laughs> not, not to dismiss jerky boys. If you're a fan, great. They, That's yeah. awesome. <laughs> they had their own thing going on. Yeah, it worked. Did. It worked. Yeah, it was very yeah. popular for a little yeah. while. You guys got a, a bunch of shows coming up, too. Yeah. Um, a great place to look for those is whiterosemotoroil.com, correct? Yes. Great place. And I did want to throw out the link tree, too. Uh, link tree slash... White Rose Motor Oil. That has all the links, has ticket links. Uh, there's a Zazzle store that includes, I was informed, merch that you can't get at the show, so it's worth checking That's out. True. Has all sorts of stuff, so make sure to check out the link tree in your spare time. Um, let's see. Uh, you've got October 7th, you've got L- uh, Lafayette Music Festival. Yeah. And yes. that has a bunch of big names on it. Yes. You're playing with uh, Gas Pops, yeah. Drunken Hearts. Yeah. Um, uh, card catalog. Card catalog, stage. yeah. We're Heavy diamond them. rings on our stage. Oh, nice. Yeah, it's a, our Miller's stage is that. like, I mean, the, all the stages are amazing, but when I saw our stage, I was like, yeah, I love nice. these bands. <laughs> Spells is on that as well. Spells awesome. Is not on our yeah, stage. Not on our stage, but, but that we'll have to bop around and Where them. is it in Lafayette? Um, it's five different music venues. Oh, okay. And yeah. so you buy, you buy a ticket and you can go to all five of them. And yeah. it's it's ridiculously affordable. Oh, oh nice. Yeah. <laughs> Is it in the downtown area then? So, Just yeah. like along the strip? Yep. Okay. I haven't been to Lafayette so, enough to know Lafayette's layout yeah. well Not enough. Yeah, not all but, yeah. music venues then, just some yeah. restaurants I, and They stuff. have more than I thought. Oh, they yeah. Have, yeah, we're playing it at one called The End, I think. Okay. And uh, it looks I haven't beautiful been there in a online. It has a big chandelier on the stage. Nice. Very pretty. That's cool. Well, that sounds fun. Yeah. And then... I know you got a bunch of other shows, but yeah. uh, you're going to Madrid, <laughs> New Mexico. Well, kind of, yeah, New Mexico. Yeah, we we've been traveling a lot this year, um, and I but feel not like to been, Spain. Yeah, not, not to, to Spain, Spain. Unfortunately, <laughs> not yet. Um, if you're listening, but, Madrid. Yeah, Spain. Madrid, Spain. Yeah. So, uh, um, but yes, we do have a show in in. I, apparently, they pronounce it Madrid. Um, oh, Madrid. So yeah, I didn't know that until we went there, and they were like, "Yeah, it's Madrid." And I'm like, and I, they could be. Pranking me. Like, so if I'm saying yeah. this wrong, I am sorry. It's like Buena Vista. Of, yeah, are you right. sure? Yeah. Is that right? Sure are you sure about that? that? I don't but, know if uh, I can say know, that. I'm just going to say what they said and I'm going to stick with it. But yeah, so yeah, we're playing down in that area. And then um, and then November 3rd, we have uh, Roxy on Broadway. And that's going to be really cool. Yeah. So awesome. Um, yeah. And tickets we love for Roxy. that are available yeah. online. Yeah. And there'll be other bands yeah. on that bill. I'm not sure who's going to be on there, but uh, it's going to be a really fun night. The Roxy is. A beautiful venue. And lots of cool shows. Yeah. What's one of your uh, favorite festivals you've played this year? You've played oh a few, my right? Gosh. If I have to pick one, hmm. that we seriously we played so many awesome festivals, yeah. and I can't say enough good about every single one of them. Um, but Shellraiser is my my Shell favorite Razor. because um, the the person who puts it on is just. I mean, he's a lovely, lovely human, yeah. and we're, I feel like we're really lucky to have met him. He's just a great person, and Shellraiser is worth checking out. Um, I don't know if we're going to be able to be a part of it in the future or not, but it, regardless, he does. He works so hard and puts on such an event, and um, it's in this little area of Nevada that nobody like knows about yet, hmm. and I feel like it's it's beautiful there. Interesting. And, yeah. Shellraiser um, Fest. Yeah. And that set, I think, is available on, is it on your YouTube page? People can watch... The show there, there's set. several songs from it. Yeah, okay, yeah. Some songs. Shout out to Doug. <laughs> yeah, Doug yeah. shows up um, from. He drives from LA to see us, and he's awesome. And he films everybody, and he puts up some pretty good videos. That's um, awesome. So if you want to see other videos of us live, that's a, a good Sweet. place to look. Yeah. YouTube. Yeah. It's the, the magic of the yeah. information <laughs> superhighway, right? You can also watch goofy <laughs> videos that we make ourselves. Yeah. That's fun. Yeah. That's what it's all about, right there. Yeah. Well, once again, we've got White Rose Motor Oil, and their new album is right here, "The Gift of Poison." available at all their shows uh, coming up. So uh, whiterosemotoroil.com is a great place to check out. Um, we've got about 10 more minutes, a little less than 10 minutes. If you've got a couple songs in you, is there anything else you wanted to say before we leave? You know, um, so these next two songs are, are uh, the last one I just want to dedicate to the state of Colorado and the beautiful place that we live. It's called Mountain State. And it's kind of a departure from our sound you'll see because the first song we're going to play is straight up is your sound (laughs) it's our sound (laughs) it's It's called trouble or nothing yeah (laughs) and then and then we're going to end with with mountain state and i just i really just want to give it as a a dedication to this beautiful place we live and uh, how sometimes it helps to go outside if you're feeling kind of down or whatever so yeah. yeah 
All right, you're tuned in to KRFC Radio Vision Live at Lunch with White Rose Motor Oil. And, of course, as always, we have an amazing crew behind the scenes. Our audio-visual crew today consists of Jeremy Smith and Eric Delano, making all the cameras run, doing all that magic. And then, of course, um, making the music sound even better than it does in this room. At in the end of the day, Greg Doris and Colton Benning. Uh, let's give a shout-out to them. Thanks, guys, so much for all the hard work you do every week. Awesome. All right. Well, so. thanks for coming and hanging out with us yeah. today. Thanks, thanks for having us. Appreciate you being on live been awesome. at lunch here at KRFC. Ready? Yep. Yeah. This is the last one. How's this song go? a trace. You've got birds who won't stop singing. You've got flowers still to savor. And you've got hills and trees around you to show you life's still in your favor. Yes, these mountains never leave you. They rise high without a flood. Oh, and they will leave you breathless, filled with wonder, 
loving dog So if you feel unlucky And life is seeming so unkind Lift your eyes and take a breath in And let the mountains change your mind Yes, these mountains never leave you They rise high without a flower Oh, and they will leave you breathless Filled with wonder, love and doubt So if you feel unlucky Life is seeming so unkind Lift your eyes, take a breath And let the mountains Change your mind Lift your eyes Take a breath in. Let the mountains Change your mind Yes, let the mountains Change your mind Thank you for listening to Live at Lunch, and thank you to the Music District here in the heart of Fort Collins, Colorado. Live at Lunch is produced by KRFC 88.9 FM in the Ginger and Baker studio. If you'd like to appear on Live at Lunch, email our music director, David Vosick, at david at krfcfm.org.